Hey there, it's Joel. This is the A1 from Bamboo, a brand new bed slinger with a 256 millimeter cubed build volume, four color support via an AMS light, and it is $399 or $559 for the combo. I haven't had this machine for that long and I've done some prints, but I don't really want to call this a review. It's a very familiar motion system. I've dealt with many, many, many machines that look and act just like this, but I think my experiences with this machine in these models is very valid and I would like to talk to you about those but also what's happening going forward. Unboxing this was a typical Bamboo Lab unboxing experience. I did throw the hat on backwards because it was business time. All of the pieces came out easily, it was assembled easily, and I had no problems whatsoever. The nozzle on this is a 0.4 millimeter non-hardened nozzle that goes to 300 C and the bed on this flippity floopities back and forth, and we'll go to 100C. There is active flow rate compensation because there is an eddy current sensor that measures the pressure within the extrusion process. There's also automatic bed leveling because the nozzle goes tippity tap on the build plate to establish a plane, and that nozzle is attached to a hot end that is easily removed and swapped. Now the next part is straight from the A1 Media Kit, and it was written extremely well, and so I just kind of wanted to say it uh, word for word. The A1 has one of the most advanced filament monitoring systems. Most 3D printers have filament runout sensors to detect the presence of filament. The A1 goes beyond that by measuring the existence of filament, its speed and odometry, the tension above the extruder, and the pressure under the extruder. This allows people to monitor filament runout, tangles on the spool, and slips on the extruder. Now that's a lot. That makes it sound really smart. And in my time with the machine, I didn't get to test 90% of what was just said in that sentence. And with the plethora of videos that will be available on this machine as of now, I'm pretty sure some people are going to get you some test results from that specific sentence. After the unboxing, obviously, I just had to do some calibration and some setup, and it went exactly as expected. There were no problems in the process. And I think what Bamboo Lab has done extremely well is absolutely nail that first run experience. As far as models go, the first one that I printed is this Benchy and it's three color. It used three different materials from the AMS unit and it printed just fine. And it's, it's a Benchy. Like Bamboo has nailed the Benchy print uh, just like with their other machines and it looks totally fine. Uh, this is a good Benchy. So this model is Espeon, and what I like about this is the ease at which the A1 was able to reproduce this geometry. Now, no, it's not perfect, perfect, but considering what I had to do to create this model, this is an exceptional example of what is capable. I loaded this model into Bamboo Slicer, and I painted it myself. I colored the eyes black, and I colored the gem thing at the front red. I loaded in filaments and this purple is a printed solid Jesse PLA purple. It's brilliant. And then I sliced and I hit print. Now there were supports right there. That's the support material that was generated. Uh, in a previous piece of footage, I did remove the support material and it did pop off pretty easily. But I think this is a really good example of what this machine is attempting to do and what it's capable of because imagine me not knowing anything about 3D printing but getting a machine and wanting to print, for example, my favorite Pokemon. How would I do that? Well, I would use the painting interface, I would enable support generation, and then I would hit print. That's what I would do and that's what I did here and that's why I think this is such a good example. Now, obviously, like I said, it's not perfect. If you Look under the chin, it's got some artifacting. If you look at the eyes, because the Bamboo Lab is changing the speeds of the print depending on the geometry, you're getting two different sheens, two different ref reflective surfaces. You've got shiny here and you've got matte here. So that's also an issue that might be able to be mitigated in slicing. I can confirm Pokemon people, Pokemon pets, they have butts. The organic shape of the back here, going up towards the neck and the head, I mean, it's brilliant. It's a really good example of what Bamboo Lab is trying to do with the A1, and obviously we'll get to that towards the end. Next up from the Bamboo Lab internal memory is this whistle. I think it looks really, really good. I think it looks really good, but also it works.
So Bamboo did a really good job reproducing this geometry. It works and this is a fantastic pan flute. One of the things that's on that internal memory is this thing, a little helicopter. And these are all the parts. They just print like this on the build plate and then you pluck it off and you put it together. So we should have a successful takeoff in three, two, one. Now we go to this thing on the build plate, and that is the top part. Four of these pieces together form Voltron. No, they don't form Voltron, but they form a top part that goes on the X1 and P1 platform that you can put then the AMS on top. It's just like with those machines, because of the build volume, it's able to make it. Turned out really good. Overhangs, this, this level of overhang or this kind of soft curve that comes up, it's always a problem for the FFF process. Being a functional print, I wasn't super worried about this. Now, what I could have done with the Bamboo Lab machine here is added in soluble support or PETG as support and made it 100%. This was on the memory as well. This is, this is an interesting model to print via FFF technology because there are so many tiny little points that have to just have small deposits of polymers and then retract it. It was a little stiff at the beginning, but once you kind of work it and loosen up the connections, they seem to work fine. If you look up close, it's not, it's not perfect, this is an incredible model that was reproduced, again, by just clicking a button. I think that's a really good thing. Just like with the A1 Mini, there is a project included. I didn't have the time to do this, but some people will, and I'm sure videos today and beyond are gonna be able to showcase this, and you can go see them on other channels. All parts are able to be printed on this. And just like with the other projects on the A1 Mini, this gives you the non-printable parts. And then there's a QR code you can scan to go to Maker World to download the STLs for this and then print them out, put it together. The last model is this, and this is by Clockspring. The reason that I'm so impressed with this is because of how the machine was able to reproduce it, again, just by hitting a button. Both of these are 0.16 millimeter layer height. If I take this away, this part is Hi5 Blue PETG from Protopasta. I think it did an amazing job. There's a little bit of wisps there, which you don't have to be worried about because you get yourself a torch and you can clear those up. It looks absolutely amazing, and PETG is no problem for this machine. However, this is ASA material, and why I'm so amazed by this is because I just loaded the material and I hit print. I put in this model in the slicer, I told it it was ASA, and I used 0.16 millimeter layer height, and I just hit print, and that's it. And this has a, an amazing motion to it. It's all, it's all print in place. Oh, I love this model. I absolutely love this model. I am so happy with this. Uh, and so the A1 is capable of printing with some advanced materials. Not throwing this. Put the Benchy in here. Keep it safe. In the end, the A1 is, I think, a fantastic example of tr Bamboo trying to enter and take over a consumer segment. And so if you think about machines that look like this, there are a lot of machines that look like this, and they fall into what I believe to be two categories. There's one where these machines are slightly more expensive. They have an ecosystem. They have filaments made by the manufacturer. They have a software package. They have the ability to print from Wi-Fi. They are heavily supported. They are easy to use. They last a long time. They are kind of expensive. Now we look at the lower cost segment that may not have the software features. It may not have the ecosystem or the materials. It may not have the support. It may not have the longevity, but it's inexpensive. It doesn't cost a lot. And the A1 is the intersection of both of these. Bamboo has come up with a 3D printer and an add-on that don't cost a lot and competes with this segment of machines that look like this. At the same time, the A1 itself is completely feature rich and it has a software package. It has the ability to do Wi-Fi printing. They have their own materials. They have their own support. So the A1 now exists within this vertical as well but it's priced as if it's in this vertical. And so we've come to this convergence where the A1 is really 
poised to make an incredibly big splash in this ocean. Well then who is this A1 for? Because I just talked about these verticals, these markets that it's trying to take over. And the answer is everyone. The A1 itself is being manufactured in a way that makes it easily accessible and usable by someone who hasn't had the opportunity to use a 3D printer before. The first run experience is easily one of the best I've seen, which I've said before. And once the first run experience is done, the machine is able to make things really easily with the fewest steps possible. I think that really lends itself to a new user experience. Now, when we talk about the advanced users, they don't necessarily need the ability to do one click printing, though it is valuable to have that functionality, but you need an advanced set of features and configuration abilities and settings and you need the ability to dial things in you need to be able to print with not just pla and i think with this machine and this print right here i've proven that so i think that the a1 actually serves both categories the new user and the advanced or experienced user and so therefore the a1 really is for everybody where does the a1 fit within the bamboo lab ecosystem I think that's a really interesting question because Bamboo has themselves a decision to make. The P1P is sort of the low cost Core XY component, but the P1S can easily become that. And now with the A1 itself serving people the same build volume, open air, and showing you that it can achieve the quality at speed that the P1P can do, is there really a reason now for the P1P to exist within the portfolio of Bamboo Lab? Only time will tell. We can't talk about the A1 without talking about the future of Bamboo Lab. When the X1 and the X1 Carbon were released, people liked it. The P1S, the P1P, same form factor, but different price points and you know different abilities and a potato for a screen. And then people were clamoring for a larger format machine from Bamboo and Bamboo said, we have the answer, the A1 Mini, a bed slinger, which they vowed to defeat in their Kickstarter statement. It was kind of a blow to the user base, but people realized the quality that it can do is fantastic. And so I think it was for the most part well received. So people thought the next machine might be this big offering from Bamboo that everybody has been asking for. And sure enough, it wasn't. It's this, the A1. So now Bamboo with all of this, I would assume will have a larger format machine sometime in the future. I don't know what's gonna happen. Is it going to be an enclosed Core XY monster that can do massive prints? Or is it gonna follow in the steps of the A1 Mini and the A1 and B, a large format bed slinger that can achieve speed? If you had your say, I'd be really curious which way do you think Bamboo Lab should go for a larger format machine? Let me know down in the comments below. At the end of the day, the A1 is a decent offering from Bamboo that has a great first run experience, but offers enough functionality for advanced users to take advantage of. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what this machine is, or I'd love to hear what you think about the Bamboo Lab ecosystem. And you know, at the end of the day, if you wanna purchase this, I'll put a link down in the description, but so many people have this and are showing it off and giving you their thoughts on it. Go watch the other videos out there on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and all of that. And if you wanna support other creators, they're gonna have their links in the description as well. Well, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. Yeah. And as always, high five.